Okay, today we're going to do a couple of experiments with melting HDPE in my trusty old sandwich toaster. I don't use this for sandwiches anymore, this is now exclusively used for melting plastic and recycling HDPE. So today we're going to do two experiments actually which we're going to look at what happens when HDPE cools after melting. HDPE contracts really quite violently when it cools after melting and that can be a problem if you're trying to recycle it. So let's have a little look at the, that phenomenon today. So sandwich toaster is just coming up to temperature. While we're just waiting for that light to go out I will talk a little bit about the materials I use. These things are intended for baking cookies and things. You, they're non-stick sheets. I got them in the pound shop. They're some sort of Teflon coated fabric I think but they're very good for melting HDPE because they don't stick to it and they're tough enough to peel off without tearing. I'm also going to use four little nuts and I put these inside the sandwich toaster, one in each corner, and that prevents it closing all the way and keeps the, an even distance between the two plates, which means that the plastic melts and I get a consistent thickness of sheet. The other thing I use is this cardboard ring. The reason I use this cardboard tube is that the plastic granules have a tendency to spread on the uh, when they're poured on. And if we're not careful, keeping it all in one place while it melts and sticks to the bottom is actually quite difficult. You can't heap up very much. I use a cardboard ring just to constrain it while it's melting. Okay, so we are up to temperature. So, here's how we do it. First sheet goes on. A little nut in each corner of the plate. I'll try and keep it well out of the way of where the plastic's going to be going. These are just M4 nuts, so if I wanted a thicker sheet, obviously I can use bigger nuts there. Cardboard ring goes on. And then I'm just going to pour in to that ring. I think we'll go for like three scoops of this HDPE plastic. Should be plenty. So I'm going to leave that on there for a second while the plastic just melts a little bit onto the sheet and then I very very carefully lift it up and hopefully it won't spread out too much. We're okay. Good. Mostly in one place. That's good. Getting it to pile up like that would be actually quite difficult if I just poured it onto a heap on its own. So that's it. So then top sheet goes on. Sandwich toaster closed. And I've got a bit of a trick here. Is I just get a couple of these clamps and I have to be a bit careful here because this is not really designed to take this kind of treatment. But what this does, if you can see, I'll try and do it the other way around so you can see what I'm doing. So what this does is it just squeezes the top plate down onto the plastic and that brings it into closer contact with the resin which will melt it better but it also as it squeezes it together it will force the air gaps out of the uh, material and so we'll end up with a nice solid sheet rather than something with porous holes in it. While we're waiting for that to cook we'll just have a quick look at what I've done previously. I've got lots of other videos about HDP recycling, so I'll put some links in the video description here. This is the pieces I normally make. They look a bit like this when they come out, although this is a smallish one. And it's a nice flat, fairly uniform piece of HDPE. And what I did, I made a whole bunch of these, and it was my intention to try to weld them together into a solid sheet like this, and then I was going to skin a uh, canoe with this. I was going to build a plastic boat. It didn't work out. Maybe we'll revisit that project at some point in the future, but not now. Anyway, so the way I got this HDPE flat, it doesn't want to be flat. And as it cools, it, it contracts and that causes all sorts of buckling and distortion. So the way I got these to stay flat is while they were cooling, I clamped them between two pieces of wood. So I clamped a flat piece of wood on top, clamped it nice and tight, left it there until it's completely cool. That does two things. One, it constrains the, the HDPE so it physically can't buckle, but the other thing is it insulates it, which means it cools much more slowly 
and uniformly so it doesn't distort quite so much. So today the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to actually show you what happens if we don't clamp it. So let's see how we're getting on inside the toaster. I reckon it's probably done. Oops, it's looking good. The nuts have fallen out and we have actually got a nice thin and consistent sheet of HTP there. So let's get the gloves on and away we go. Right, so here's our sheet of plastic. It's a bit difficult to work with gloves. I did find actually while I was doing this project I got calloused fingers and actually after a while I was able to very briefly handle this stuff without um, the gloves but it's, I don't recommend that to anybody. So as you can see, a really nice piece of HDPE there. Kind of nice and pretty and it's got this radial pattern because it's been squeezed. So I'm just going to put that loosely back on, on the top there because I'm going to turn this over and peel the, the sheet off the other side. If I, le if I leave that on there you can already see it starting to pucker a little bit there. So I'm just going to take this sheet off of this side and then it should be more or less free. There we go. Right, okay, so I'm going to put that on the piece of wood here and we're going to see what happens to HDPE if it's cooled without any constraints. Okay, so there we go. That's actually solid now. It's still too hot to handle properly, and in fact, it's still kind of softish. But as you can see, it's gone all kind of dimpled and crumpled, which is makes it much less usable as a craft material or anything like that. So, um, so that's why I used to constrain it flat with a board, and you get a much smoother surface. You get a thin-ish sort of uniform sheet, although still prone to buckling and that's a bit hard to control. So, the next experiment we're going to do, I think, we'll put this back in, we'll melt it again and we'll see what happens if we force it to cool on one side. That's going to be interesting. So for that I've got myself here, I've got a block of ice. We're going to put a block of ice on it when it's melted and we'll see what happens. I've not done this before so this is uh, going to be an interesting experiment. Do you know what? I'm actually not going to remelt this piece because it's actually still quite pliable. I'm going to set this aside because when it's completely cooled, I think we're going to find it buckles even more. So I'll show you at the end of the video what's happened to this piece of plastic. For the next one, we'll start with one of these hexagons. It'll spread and melt a little bit and it won't be perfectly hexagonal anymore when we've finished uh, melting it. On we go with the hexagonal plate. Another sheet on top, and we'll close up the sandwich toaster. Okay, here we go then. Toaster open, yeah, that's looking good to me. Gloves on, open them up. Let's see what we got. Very nicely melted, that's good. So, out onto the board. And the sheet hardly sticks to this. this. This has been melted before, so it's a very coherent piece of material. So that does always help. Let's just make sure we can peel that side off, because I really don't want it to stick, because that will interfere with our plans here. That's good. Right, so now, here's the interesting bit. I have a theory about what's going to happen here. Let's see if I'm right. So, block of ice right in the middle. theory is not correct actually. I kind of hoped that what we were going to get here was the edges would pull up into it. Oh, well, it's kind of doing the opposite of what I expected actually. So I kind of hoped we were going to get the edges to pull up into a, a bowl around the edge. But what we've actually achieved here is almost the exact opposite of what I expected to happen. I thought the middle was going to contract and that that was going to pull up the edges, but actually the opposite seems to have happened. How bizarre! I think all that's happened here is that the 
it's, it's definitely drawn in the edges, but it hasn't really um, let go of the the sheet. It's still quite melted in places, but that really kind of shows you how much this stuff contracts when it cools. So there we go. That, whoops, water on the floor. That is what you get if you cool it too rapidly. Let's see what happens if I put the ice in the middle of that now. So this is one of the reasons why HDPE is not used for 3D printing. So whilst everybody seems to think this would make a fantastic filament material, the properties of HDPE are such that when it cools it contracts so violently. I think if you were trying to 3D print with this stuff, your model would literally tear itself apart as it cooled. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed. I kind of hoped we'd make, it would just turn into a beautiful little bowl, but you know, you can't always get what you want, can you? Um, so there we go. That's what happens when HDPE cools unevenly. That's why I have to clamp it, that's why I have to go to all sorts of lengths to uh, constrain it while it's cooling. Last little bit, we'll have a look at the bit. Here we go. Still warm. But that's the piece we played with earlier. And as you can see it's just, it's completely hopelessly distorted now. There's not really very much I could make out of that as it stands unless I really wanted a curved piece of something. So um, that piece is completely rigid now and there's no way of bending that back into the right shape. So, I hope that's been useful. There are going to be some more practical HDP recycling videos coming soon, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, please think about subscribing. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.